One way of uh, reducing the braking distance of an aircraft is to utilize thrust reversers. So in, in this image, you can see that if the aircraft landed and it relied on just the aircraft brakes alone, it would take 2,500 feet to, uh, to stop. Whereas if the aircraft used the brakes and thrust reversers, the braking distance is reduced to 2,000 uh, feet per minute. So there's a 20% reduction. And this can significantly aid the safety of the aircraft. Okay? And, and, and in fact, the, the airports in which the aircraft can operate into, because you know, airports have a defined runway length, so you need to be able to, to stop in a partic particular distance. Okay, so how is thrust reversing re achieved? Well, there's a couple of methods. So it could be using aerodynamic blockage, mechanical blockage, hot stream spoilers, or cold stream reversers. But let's just concentrate on the mechanical blockage because it sort of encapsulates the whole theory behind thrust reversers. So an example of a mechanical blockage system is the clamshell doors. So we have these doors and they're in the shape of a clamshell. This part of here is, is supposedly like the clamshell. And the doors can be fitted uh, before the nozzle exit. Okay, so we pre-exit or they can be after the nozzle exit, uh, post-exit. So what happens is when the aircraft lands and there's weight on the wheels, and the pilot then selects the reverse thrust, then the doors would close and the air is deflected back up. Now it is important that the, the clamshells can only operate when weight is on the wheels. So the squat switch is used to um, make sure that the system can't be operated unless uh, there's weight on wheels. The angle at which the air is deflected back, uh, there is a maximum, so this angle here, there is a maximum of 135 degrees. If the air deflects back any further, then there is the possibility that the air, the burnt uh, gas, I should say, because it's air and fuel, um, might be re-ingested into the, into the engine. So the, this angle here, maxes out at 135 degrees. So let's take that uh, that vector and just mark in here the uh, 135 degrees. This vector here is the original uh, thrust vector. Okay, so th this is what the uh, aircraft would have been producing had it not had thrust reversal. So let's let's give that value T. Okay, that's the the value of thrust the aircraft was producing, or the engine was producing. It's now deflected by 135 degrees. So when it's deflected by 135 degrees, that means this angle in here is 45 degrees. And then if we complete our right angle triangle, we see that this. Uh, value here is t times the cos of 45 degrees. So this vector now can be subdivided into its uh, vertical and horizontal component. Um, we're interested in the horizontal component because thrust is in the horizontal axis. So if the hypotenuse of this triangle, so this triangle here, has a hypotenuse of t cosine 45, then this side, which is the reverse thrust, is also, so it's T cos 45, so it's the hypotenuse T cos 45 by the cosine of 45. And I know this is angle is 45 degrees because this angle is 45 degrees. Now the cosine of 45 degrees is 0 0.7071. So 0 0.70. 71 multiplied by 0 0.7071 is roughly a half. Okay. 
So the reverse thrust is a half of the normal thrust. So, so uh, maybe another way of rephrasing that, the maximum reverse thrust that can be achieved is half the normal thrust. All right, so that's uh, reverse, uh, thrust reversers.